If you've been watching this channel a while, you know that as a beer nerd, I love finding different ways to measure beer. We've gone through IBUs, gravities, titratable acidity, and today I can't help but add another to that list. Unfortunately, we have to take a brief detour away from beer today, but we aren't going too far because today we're talking cider. Hello beer nerds, this is Beer by the Numbers. You know, every once in a while I like a good, dry, hard cider, and as the weather warms up, a crisp, refreshing cider becomes quite the temptation. And just like master brewers, cider masters seek ways to measure their delicious product to keep it consistent across batches. So let's get to the core of this problem and learn all about the brick scale and how it applies to hard ciders. Unlike gravity or degrees Plato, which measure the density of a liquid and compare it as a ratio to water, the brick scale is appealingly simple. One degree of bricks is equal to one gram of sucrose per 100 grams of solution. That's right, just a simple gram to gram ratio. Nothing fancy here, no bad apples around. We can end this episode here, right? Wrong. Just like malt, apples naturally contain a variety of sugars. One academic study reported the following sugars in 100 grams of apple. Glucose had just 0.9 to 3.2 grams. Fructose had 6.6 .6 to 9.6 grams. And sucrose was kind of the most varied, ranging from just under a gram to five and a half grams. And all in all, in 100 grams of apple, that's about 11 to 16 grams of sugars. Now, the ratios of sugars influences the perceived sweetness and that's because human tasters do not experience these sugars equally on a gram to gram basis. Researchers have used tasting panels to help determine isosweet levels, i.e. the concentrations of various sugars that taste equally sweet. Using a solution of 10% sucrose as a reference, they found that an 8% solution of fructose was equally sweet. On the other hand, glucose required an 18% solution for the same effect. So why do cider fermenters choose to measure sucrose in a cider when determining how sweet it is when we know that fructose has more sweet punching power per gram? Well, it's because sucrose is the most applicable choice when it comes to sweetening a cider after it's fermented. Sucrose is very common. In fact, sucrose is the table sugar you add to your coffee each morning. Fructose, however, is much harder to come by in a pure form, and its various forms usually add additional flavors to a beverage like cider, when sucrose will just add pure sweetness and no additional undesired flavors. So how does one measure bricks? Well, you could use a hydrometer and a fancy equation, but there's a much easier tool that gives you a more accurate measurement. Unlike beer, which needs labs worth of equipment to determine an exact measurement of alcohol content, cider just needs a refractometer. A refractometer is a simple to use tool. It has a small surface onto which one can squeeze the cider or any other juice, and then holding it towards the light, one can read the scale to see the bricks measurement. It's that easy. So easy, in fact, that bricks has struck a chord with folks other than cider makers. Winemakers often measure the sugar content of their grapes, fruit juicers can measure sugars before making concentrate, and you can even measure how sweet your sweet corn is without upsetting the apple cart. So there you have it, beer nerds and cider nerds, the skinny on the brick scale, all with only eight apple puns. Clearly, puns are a peeler of strength in my joke repertoire. Anyway, if you thought this video was sweet, give it a like below. And if you want to be alerted each time we fresh squeeze a new episode of Beer by the Numbers, hit that subscribe button. Stay curious, beer nerds, and as the old adage sorta goes, a cider a day keeps the doctor away.